This video will introduce the density matrix in Hartree-Fock theory. So in the previous video, we discussed the Hartree-Fock roton equations where we can express all of the spatial orbitals in restricted Hartree-Fock as a linear combination of atomic orbital basis sets. And this leads to a nice set of matrix equations, uh, but there's some difficulty in actually solving those. So uh, one very helpful and convenient matrix that we should also be aware of before moving forward is called the density matrix. Okay, so the density, or the charge density as a function of position, it, we can think about as what's the, what's the density of all electrons in the molecule uh, added up at that particular location in space. So there's, you're more likely to find an electron where there's more electron density, and you can't find an electron where there is no electron density. And overall, the electron density over all space should be uh, the number of electrons. So starting out there, the, the electron density as a function of position is going to be, in restricted Hartree-Fock, 2 times the sum from A equals 1 to N over 2. So twice all of the occupied spatial orbitals of spatial orbital A, psi star A, psi A. So psi star times psi being the probability density for a particular particle, summed over all of the spatial orbitals times two, because each of them has two electrons, a spin up and a spin down. So this is sort of the charge density for all the electrons, or we might also express as two times the sum over all occupied spatial orbitals, of the square magnitude of that particular spatial orbital. Okay, and then as I mentioned, if we integrate uh, with respect to all positions in space of this charge density, uh, well, integration is a linear operator, so we can have two times sum over all occupied spatial orbitals, integral over space psi star a psi a. Um, note that the integral of psi star a psi a over all space the integral of any one particle wave function over all space is going to equal 1. There's a 100% chance of finding a particle somewhere. So that equals <clears throat> 2 times a sum from A equals 1 to N over 2 of 1. So there are N over 2 terms in this sum. Each of them is 1. So this is N over 2. And then we multiply by 2. And we get exactly the, res the expected result. We get N which is what it has to be because our, the integral of our charge density over all space should give us the total number of electrons in our chemical system. Okay, so now that we've established that, let's now, let's now think about this in terms of our basis functions. So we have our charge density, which is twice the sum from A equals 1 to N over 2 of psi star A psi A. And each of these can be expressed as a linear combination of basis functions. So for psi star, let's express that as c star mu a phi mu star. And for phi, psi a, let's express that as c nu a phi nu. Each of those is summed from 1 to k for all of the basis functions. So we got three elements in a sum there, and we can factor out those sums in sort of any order that we like. So what we can do then is do as a double sum over mu and nu of twice the sum from A equals 1 to N over 2 of C star mu A, C nu A, phi star mu, phi nu. So the overlap of those two, uh, the overlap of those two basis functions times the sum over uh, these elements in the coefficient matrix uh, doubled for the number of, uh, doubled for spin up and spin down, and then summed over all of these elements uh, gives us the total charge density. But this term in, in parentheses here is kind of interesting because the C star times C is sort of reminiscent of this psi star times psi. And in fact, uh, it's going to be very similar once we make a new definition for what our density matrix elements are and that it's going to be this uh, P mu nu uh, is going to be this value in parentheses here. So basically, the overlap of these two basis functions times this density matrix element add, summed up over all density matrix elements is going to give us the charge density. So basically the density matrix, each element in that matrix, 
is going to be the sum over all of our occupied spatial orbitals of these two uh, columns and our rows inside of our coefficient matrix of all of our uh, of all of our orbitals. So P, as I mentioned, is called the density matrix. It is all that is necessary given a basis set to completely specify the charge density of that molecule. And the density matrix has a nice property that it is actually invariant to all of the orbitals that we have given a particular basis set. So we can transform the orbitals as we like with any sort of unitary transformation, but the, this aggregate uh, multiplication and sum over all of these occupied orbitals, just as a lot of other properties were invariant with respect to the choice of orbitals, so too is our density matrix invariant to our orbitals for a given basis set. So all we need to do is get the charge density from these, and in fact the density matrix in that sense is sort of more real even than the, uh, than the coefficient matrix because those can be transformed in any way we like, even though often we choose for convenience the uh, canonical orbitals, which are orthonormal to one another. Okay, so the really interesting thing we can do with this then is we can factor out the Fock operator in the following way. The Fock operator is our one electron uh, operator plus our mean field Hartree Fock two electron operator, so the VHF R1. And once we use the definition of the density matrix in this kind of way, when we express all of our um, when we express our occupied orbitals in terms of the basis functions, then it becomes the following expression we get uh, for our two electron Fock operator one half sum over lambda and sigma of density matrix element P lambda sigma integral over R2 of um, basis function phi lambda star 1 over R12 2 minus uh, permutation operator P12 uh, phi sigma. So this is really nice because now we have an expression for the Fock operator here which is completely independent of the form of our individual spatial orbitals and only depends on what our basis functions are there. And we also mentioned that it's invariant uh, to the orbitals, so both the density matrix element and both the density matrix element uh, and our uh, basis functions here are invariant to this. So this is a nice expression for the Fock operator uh, where we have to update uh, fewer things in order to be able to correctly solve these Hartree Fock equations, uh, which the density matrix is quite helpful for moving forward.